Hello. In this video, we are going to look at the predominance of the various protonated or deprotonated forms of three triprotic acids, most specifically their alpha values at different pHs. The first of our triprotic acids is phosphoric acid, H3PO4, which has this structure in its fully protonated state. After it loses its first acidic hydrogen, we have its conjugate base, the dihydrogen phosphate ion, which has a minus one charge. If phosphoric acid loses a second acidic proton, we now have the hydrogen phosphate ion with a minus two charge. When phosphoric acid is completely deprotonated, we now have the phosphate ion with a minus three charge. Here is a computed uh, graph of the alpha values for the various species of phosphoric acid. And we notice at the lowest pHs, the uh, fully protonated phosphoric acid is the predominant species, it's shown in black. And then when we get down to very high pHs, where the uh, hydrogen ion concentration is very low, the predominant species is going to be the minus three and the minus two uh, oxoanions of phosphorus, up to and including uh, phosphate ion itself. Here we have the acid dissociation values for the three different protonation events of phosphoric acid. Shown in the same style as our previous video on the uh, derivation of the formula for alpha values, so that you can compare that as easily as possible. And these are the specific values for phosphoric acid. Here we notice next to the arrow where the concentration of phosphoric acid and the concentration of dihydrogen phosphate ion uh, are equal. So this is the sort of crossover point between the black and the blue lines. And this corresponds exactly to the pKa number one for the first acid dissociation constant to around 2.16. Next, we have the crossover between the blue line and the green line, the blue line being the dihydrogen phosphate minus one ion, and the green line being the hydrogen phosphate minus two ion. And we see that they have this point where they both have equal concentrations, which is 50-50, and this corresponds to a pKa of 7.21. And we know by the henderson hasselbach equation that at the pKa, uh, that's equal to the pH, that's where the two species are in equivalent concentration. Then the final crossover point between the green line and the red line, between hydrogen phosphate and phosphate ion, this corresponds to the pKa of the third acid association constant. So that gives us a value around 12.3. Our second triprotic acid is citric acid, which plays such a crucial role in the Krebs cycle. Here we see that it is a tricarboxylic acid, and here it is in the fully protonated form. 
here is the structure of the conjugate base of citric acid, which has a minus one charge. We notice in this drawing that we've removed the hydrogen from the central carboxylic acid. It is not completely obvious that this would be the case. And in fact, the likelihood of a particular hydrogen being removed from citric acid depends very much upon the conformation. So please see the reference uh, below the video in the uh, comments box to see uh, an excellent uh, research paper which looked into the various structures of protonated and deprotonated citric acids. If we remove a second acidic hydrogen from citric acid, we get a structure that looks like this with a minus two charge. If we remove the third acidic proton from citric acid, we get a structure that looks like this with a minus three charge. Citric acid is interesting uh, in the analytical laboratory because if we try to detect individually each of the uh, deprotonation events by using a titration, we notice that we cannot distinguish them. So using an ordinary titration uh, process, we would notice that it looks as if there were three acidic protons that all come off at roughly the same time. So here is a graph of the alpha values for citric acid. And it's also a triprotic acid like phosphoric, but notice here how close together the three different events are, which reflects the fact of the pKa's of the three different acidic protons in citric acid having similar acid association constants. Here we have tabulated the acid association constant for the three acidic events in phosphoric acid. And we notice that the three different events have relatively similar Ka's. They're not nearly as separated as they are in the case of phosphoric acid. Here we see the first crossover between the fully protonated citric acid and the monoanion, and we see that it crosses over around the pKa of the Ka1, which gives a value of about 3.13 for this crossover point. Next is the crossover between the monoanion and the dianion, and this corresponds to a pH that's equal to the pKa of Ka2. So this gives us um, a value of around 4.76. Here we see that at high pH, the value of the red, the uh, trianion is the most abundant species and it crosses over the dianion form, which is shown in green, at a pH roughly around 6.4, thus that's the pKa of Ka3 for citric acid. Our third triprotic acid is going to be aspartic acid very important amino acid, which is shown here in its fully protonated form. As such, it has a plus one charge. The most acidic proton is going to be the one that's attached to the carboxylic acid group that is in the main chain of the amino acid, not the one that is part of the side chain. So in this particular form, the molecule has a charge of zero, 
we are in the Schwitter ion form because we have both a positive charge and a negative charge in the same molecule. The next acidic proton to be lost is the one from the carboxylic acid in the side chain. So this gives a structure with an overall minus one charge. The final acidic proton to be lost is lost from what formerly was an ammonium group, which is now becomes ordinary amine, and the resulting structure has a minus two charge. Here is a graph of the alpha values for the various species of aspartic acid. And we notice that the, while it's triprotic, it resembles the graph more for citric acid than it does for phosphoric acid, because here we have species with uh, not as distinct uh, acid dissociation values as we did for phosphoric acid. Here are listed the Ka values for the three different protonation events in aspartic acid. One from the side chain carboxyl, one from the alpha carboxyl, and one from the alpha amino group when it's protonated as ammonia. So those are the three different acidic protons that we have in aspartic acid. So here we see at the arrow the crossover between the uh, plus one ion form of aspartic acid, which is fully protonated, and the Twitter ion or zero charge form. That's where the black and the blue lines overlap. It occurs roughly at a pH of 1.95 because that is the pKa of Ka1 for aspartic acid. Here is the crossover between the Twitter ion form and the monoanion, the minus one charge form of aspartic acid, and it occurs at a pH around 3.71 because the pKa for Ka2 for aspartic acid is 3.71. Finally, here we have the crossover between the uh, monoanion and the dianion forms most deprotonated form of aspartic acid. This occurs at a pH roughly around 9.96 because that is the pKa K3 for aspartic acid. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Please stay safe out there and as always have a good one.